What's going on YouTube? So the roster update is on Friday this week. More upgrades, more downgrades. Let's go ahead and get into today's video where we guys we show you guys who we're investing in for this roster update and see if we can make some stubs together. As always, all of my roster update stuff you can find early over on my spreadsheet. There is a link down in the description down below. Get in early so you guys can make more stubs because the prices go up throughout the weeks and throughout the days that we invest in these cards. First up is going to be Teoscar Hernandez. Now, the stats that we have in this card are from June 31st. So from the last roster update up to June 21st, anything after that, I do not have. I will have it on my spreadsheet before Friday so you guys can make last minute decisions on who you should keep and who you should get rid of for the roster update. So Teoscar Hernandez has six hits against lefties, batting 375 with two home runs and two extra base hits. Obviously, he crushes lefties. He could see a contact boost if they feel like it's a good enough sample size for him. We'll have to wait and see. But against righties, he has 12 hits, batting 273 with four home runs and an additional three extra base hits, totaling seven extra base hits with those four home runs if you add them together. And his contact versus right is only 66. His power versus right is only 72. That's where I can see him getting a significant bump to get him to diamond in this roster update. We'll have to wait and see. But we do have 218 of them, so we'll have to wait and see and see if we get at that plus two to an 85, maybe at least a plus one so we make some stubs. He is still at quick sell value, so you can still get in on him right now if you like. Next up is going to be Anthony Santander. Now, I also think he might get a fielding upgrade because he has not had an air all season. Yeah, he plays in right field, but he still has, I believe, 120 to 130 putouts out there. He only has 60 fielding, so I think he deserves a fielding boost whenever that update does come. But offensively, he has three hits versus lefties, batting 500 with two home runs. Obviously not a huge sample size with only six of bats. And against righties, he has four hits, batting 286 with two home runs, no other extra base hits. And he only has 53 contact versus righty with a 288 average. I could definitely see a boost there, but they might not think that the sample size is big enough for that. So we'll have to wait and see. Another possible fielding update guy is Brandon Nimmo, but he seems to be hitting a home run almost every single game. So maybe he gets a boost there. He does need a plus four to go gold. So I don't think he gets it offensively. But if there's a defensive upgrade, he has 70 fielding. He could see a boost there just slightly just to give him an 80 overall because I think he deserves it based off his offensive attributes. But anyways, Brandon Nimmo, four hits against lefties, batting 571 with a home run and an extra base hit, and five hits batting 417 with a home run and an extra base hit against righties as well. And he only has 53. Basically, any of his offensive attributes can definitely go up as he only has 53 contact, 57 contact, 63, and 61 power. Uh, so definitely could see him get a boost uh, offensively if he just keeps it up. Now, this guy I love for whenever there's a defensive update, and it's Jerkson Profar because he's only had one air, I believe, all season, and he has 48 fielding. So I don't know how they do the fielding updates. I normally don't get into them, but when I see one air all season and he only has 48 fielding, come on, man, give him at least 60? At least, but offensively, let's take a look at him. Six home or six hits against lefties, batting 429 with a home run and one extra base hit. Obviously, he does hit lefties pretty well already, as well as righties. But hey, a little power versus lefties, a little boost to the power could definitely boost him up, and a little bit more of a contact boost because he is crushing lefties. He does have eight hits, only batting 229 against righties with one home run and one extra base hit. And that's what I keep like keeps him from going gold this update. But I'm hoping that he can get gold whenever there's a fielding update. And that's why I like to get him to now, because when they announce that fielding update, it might hike up his price if other people are aware that he has not had any airs. Once again, he's an outfielder. So even one air, you know, could could bump him but down because he doesn't have a lot of like chances out in the outfield. But he has like 120, 130 putouts with like one air. I definitely like him. And power versus righties, if he can just start hitting some home runs against righties a lot, get that power boost at least, 
and get that average up. We'll have to see where he's at around Wednesday or Thursday this week come average against righties. But I still like him long term going gold at some point this year. Another guy I like just got supercharged. So if you got in on him early, you could be selling him right now, making a decent profit because he was 60 stubs yesterday. He's like 360 stubs right now. And that is Carlos Santana, which he is on fire. Let's talk about him. Four hits against lefty and batting 500 with two home runs and an extra base hit. And against righties is where it's crazy. 14 hits, batting 341 with two home runs and four extra base hits against righties. And if you see his contact, it's only at a 47 right now with 62 power. You can definitely see a boost with him. Contact versus right and power versus right. He needs a plus five to go gold. So at his price right now, I'd probably be selling him if you were already invested in him because a plus five is a little high. And if he goes to a 79, he's still only on a quick sell for I think 175, 150, something like that. So definitely he needs that plus five to be at 400 stubs and you could be selling him now for 368. But he is supercharged. So if you got in on him early, I'd be selling right now, taking my profit as much as I could. If you can't sell all of them, keep some of them, you know, but sell what you can, right? Next up is going to be Francisco Lindor. He gets hot, he gets cold, but he is quick sell value. So why not get him just in case? Francisco Lindor, five hits against lefties, batting 263 with a home run and two extra base hits. And against righties, he has eight hits, batting 276 with two home runs and two extra base hits. Those are solid numbers since the last roster update, and I think they are enough to at least give him a plus one. Give this man a plus one. Give this man a plus two. Give him diamonds so we can make some stubs. Now, the only hitter or only pitcher I really liked and invested in was Hunter Green. 5.0 hits per nine, 11 Ks per nine, 1.5 home runs per nine, and 3.5 walks per nine. Uh, he's been walking a lot. I do not expect anything uh, of that to change. But I, what I do expect, I think his hits per nine and his Ks per nine can get a little bump and at least give him a plus one, plus two. And once again, he is a almost quick sell value. So he's almost zero risk unless he gets downgraded to a 79 or below. And then we lose some stuff. Now, the next guys I want to talk about here are guys that we can do pre-orders in. Uh, so it's going to be Paul Skeens. Now, he is a 79 overall, so I will explain how pre-orders work. But Paul Skeens has been definitely dominating the league as of late. I don't have the stats on him. I just know that he's been dominating. He is going to go up. What is he going to go up to? Well, let's just take a look real quick. 79 overall, I believe quick sells for like 150 stubs. So 150 stubs is what we can quick sell him for. So what we want to do, we know we could quick sell him right now for 150. Now we know that an 83 quick sells for 1200, an 84 quick sells for 1500. So what we'll do is we go in here, we put a buy order in now before the roster update, before he gets upgraded. And we're basically trying to say, hey, what is he going to be locked into getting upgraded to? Obviously, there is no such thing as luck, but what are we willing to risk? Are we willing to risk that he's guaranteed a plus five and he hits the 84? Or we say, you know what? I think it's more likely he goes to 83. So then we know 83 is quick sell for 1200. So anywhere from 150 to 1200 is where we want our pre order set. So we could put like, you know, 1000. So let's say he goes to an 83, we can quick sell for 1200. Make 200 stubs per card that we did a pre order for once that order goes through. Or we could go a little higher. The lower you go, the longer you're going to have to wait for that pre order to go through. So that's why it's very, you know, kind of determined, kind of risky. At the same time, if you put it super low and it never goes through, you could just cancel your order and not have to worry about it. You get your stubs back. The risk part is if you put an order up for 1500 and he only goes to an 83, then you're going to be losing stubs because you're going to get that pre order is going to go through right away. But guess what? He's selling for 1200 now because his price dropped because he did not go diamond. So his price is going to significantly drop when he gets upgraded and it's not to what everyone expected. I think he has a good chance to go 84, 83, I think is more likely. And he has probably a good 5% chance to go diamond. In this roster update so there's still a chance he could go diamond i just you know five percent chance of going diamond 30 percent chance of going 84 50 percent chance of going 83. next up is royce lewis i think he's a potential diamond as well i probably give him like a 10 percent chance of going diamond in this roster update 
However, I think he's almost a 50-50 when it comes to an 84 overall. So if you're doing pre-orders, you know, 81's quick sell for 600, 84's quick sell for 1500. Anywhere in between is where I'd be doing pre-orders for Royce Lewis. And last but not least, because I think this might be our best chance at a diamond in this roster update, and that's Stephen Kwan. He only needs a plus two. He's been on fire. He's hitting home runs. He's only got 43 power and 35 power. He might be the easiest lock for diamond that we've ever seen in MLB The Show history. 83's quick sell for 1,200. 85's quick sell for 3,000. Anywhere in between that is where I'd be doing pre-orders for Stephen Kwan. Good luck and have fun. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to like, subscribe if you're new, turn notifications on, and leave a comment down below who you are invested in for this roster update. And let me know in the comments what your favorite MLB The Show game was that you actually got to play. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.